We want to do an example of an overbooking loss table. So take the following scenario. I've got an airline that flies to a destination every day. On that airline, they may have a number of seats and each seat goes for 50 euro. That is the ticket price. This airline can look back over past experience and they can see that there's a good likelihood on every flight that there could be empty seats. That means that even though they were fully booked, a certain number of passengers may not turn up and take their seats on the flight. Every passenger that does that, that is a loss of 50 euro to the airline. The airline is thinking about adopting an overbooking strategy, which means that they're going to sell more tickets than they have seats on the flight. And this is to optimize their income. What we want to do is we want to assess what is the best overbooking strategy for them to use. So let's analyze that. So as we said, each ticket costs 50 euro. It's likely that if they use overbooking every so often, they might sell a number of extra tickets and it's possible that every passenger that actually bought a ticket will actually show up for the flight and expect their seat. This means that they may have to bump passengers off flights. That means that they will have to explain to the passengers that they have sold their seat. There are not enough seats on this flight, even though that the passenger is booked a seat. And therefore, they will have to just put them on the next available flight. That's called bumping. We have to assess what the cost is of bumping a passenger. And it might be made up of lots of different factors. And this will have to be assessed by the airline. But for example, a few different costs could be an actual seat on the next flight. And that could be with your airline or it could be with another airline. Second cost might be compensation. So you might need to put them up in a hotel for a night. You might need to give them food vouchers. You might actually need to give them a monetary gift by way of compensation. Third cost, which is more intangible, is there's a loss of goodwill there. So when a passenger is bumped off a flight, they won't be happy about it. And they may not ever fly with your airline again. They also might give you bad word of mouth. For sake of argument in this question, the airline have assessed all of those costs to sum up to an aggregate of 90 euro. To construct an overbooking loss table, there's one last piece of information that we need. And that is the probabilities of no-shows and a number of no-shows happening. So we've got a probabilities table here. And we can see that over past experience, this airline have noticed that the probability that zero no-shows will happen. That means that everyone actually turns up for the flight who has booked. The probability of that happening is 0 0.07 or a 7% chance. The probability of one person not showing up out of a whole flight that's fully booked is 0.19 or 19%. And so on. All the probabilities go down to nine. That's a total 10 different scenarios from zero to nine. And we can see we've got the total sum of probabilities there as well. If I was to add up all of the probabilities, it would come to one. And that means that it's a certainty that one of those scenarios will happen. Now that we're armed with this information, we can start constructing our overbooking loss table. We can do this with a pen and paper but I prefer to do it with a spreadsheet. So I'm going to use Excel. We're laying out our overbooking loss table. We're going to have the different overbooking scenarios across the top, and we're going to have the different no-shows scenarios across the side here. Fill the table with all the associated costs of each scenario. So firstly, the no-shows. I'm going to paste in all of the different no-show scenarios that we talked about on the previous page. Because I've got 10 different no-show scenarios, I need to actually put in a corresponding number of overbooking strategies. So I can see I'm putting in an overbooking strategy here from zero to nine as well, because the airline wants to assess if it's a possibility in extreme circumstances that nine people may not show up to a flight. They want to see, well, perhaps maybe if I overbooked by nine, what would that scenario look like? So generally in overbooking loss tables, we match the overbooking strategies to the no-show scenarios. Next, I'm going to paste in all of the probabilities of the no-show scenarios. And now I go about going through each of these different cells and looking at what are the costs associated with each of these different scenarios. Some of these can be filled in straight away, and that's why I filled in all of my zeros in a diagonal pattern across the overbooking loss table. So take here, for example, in this cell. If I overbook by zero, that means that I don't adopt an overbooking strategy at all. And if the zero no-shows, 
That means that every passenger who books actually turns up for the flight. That means that the cost is zero. The airline doesn't actually lose anything. They get a f plane full of passengers that fly out and each of those passengers is paying. Down in this cell, for example, if I overbook by four and I actually have four no-shows, again, I get a perfect match there. I've sold 104 tickets, there's 100 seats on the flight, and I've got four people not showing up. Therefore, 100 passengers fill all of the 100 seats. I've got a full flight, but no passenger is bumped. So again, that's a zero cost to the airline. That's the perfect scenario. And it's the same for all of those diagonal matches down across the overbooking loss table. Now, let's look at this cell here. If I overbook by zero, but I've got one no-show, that means that I'm going to be flying with 99 passengers on the flight. There will be one empty seat, and that will cost the airline 50 euro. If there's two no-shows, and I overbook by zero, that means that I'm going to have two empty seats, and so on and so forth, all the way down that column. So for that column, it's going to be multiples of 50. 50 euro for one empty seat, two fifties or 100 euro for two empty seats, and so on, all the way down to 450 euro for nine empty seats at 50 euro a pop. That pattern holds on the next cell or the next column over. So if I overbook by one, but two people don't show up, that means I'll have one empty seat. So therefore, that's going to cost the airline 50 euro. If I overbook by one and three people don't show up, that means I have two empty seats, 100 euro, and so on. So this column here is exactly the same as the first column, except I'm moving one cell down. And that pattern holds for each of all of the other different overbooking strategies. I'm just going one step down each time. And to take the last one here, again, just to exemplify it, if I overbook by eight and nine people don't show up, that means that there is one empty seat. So that's going to cost me 50 euro. Now we move to this other triangle on the top side of the overbooking loss table, starting with this cell here. What happens in this scenario? Well, if I overbook by one, but there are zero no-shows, that means that everybody who books actually turns up. That means that I will have to bump one passenger. So let me explain that a different way. If I overbook by one and I've got 100 seats on the flight, that means I'm actually going to sell 101 tickets. If all of the actual people who I sell tickets to turn up, the very last person, I'm going to have to say, I'm sorry, all of the actual seats are full on this flight. We're going to have to bump you onto the next, the next flight. So we discussed in the previous page that the assessed cost of that situation is 90 euro per, per passenger bumped. So 90 euro for one passenger bumped. If I overbook by two and there's zero no shows, I have to bump two passengers. So that's 90 euro by two, which is 180 euro. And so the pattern holds again going horizontally. So 90 euro for one person bumped. 180 euro for two people bumped, 270 euro for three people bump, uh, bumped, and so on. And again, just like all of the columns down on the other side of the overbooking loss table, this pattern holds all the way down for all of the different scenarios as well. So again, picking a random cell on this side of the overbooking loss table. If I overbook by seven, but there are three no shows. That means I'm going to have to bump four different passengers. So that's four times 90, which is 360 euro. So I filled out all of the different scenarios, but that patterning actually holds for every overbooking loss table. We get this resemblance between all the columns going over here, except we're moving down one cell at a time. And it's the same on the overbooking side as well. All of the actual numbers are the same, they just move one cell over for each subsequent row. Now that we have all of this data filled in in our overbooking loss table, the final step is to assess the total average weighted cost for each of the different overbooking loss strategies. 
Starting with the zero overbooking strategy, that is not overbooking at all, what will be the total weighted average cost to the airline over a given period of time? For the overbooking strategy of zero, we have the corresponding costs associated with all of the different scenarios of no-shows. What we now want to do is we want to use the probability of each of those different scenarios of no-shows happening and weight the costs according to those probabilities. And we do that by summing together the product of the probability by its corresponding cost. So in an Excel spreadsheet, let's just do this quickly, I will say equals the probability of 0 0.07 multiplied by the cost, zero, plus the probability, 0.19, multiplied by 50 euro, plus the probability of 22, multiplied by 100, plus the probability of 0.16, multiplied by 150, and continuing all, all the way down. By using this calculation, we're giving more weighting to the costs that are more likely to happen and less weighting to the costs that are least likely to happen. And because we're using the probabilities, the balance of weighting is perfectly proportional. So I'm going to press enter here and see what the result is. So I can see in this scenario I've got a result of 152. What does this figure mean? Well, it means that over a certain period of time, if this airline adopts a zero overbooking strategy, given the experience that they've had before with the probabilities of different no-show scenarios happening and the different costs that they'd expect from the ticket price, they can see that the average cost that they will be incurring for adopting a zero overbooking strategy will be €152 Euro per flight. Now that we have this figure, we just need to calculate all of the other figures going along in the same method. If we were using it by longhand, we would just have to calculate all of those different figures one at a time. But with Excel, I would just like to just amend my formula slightly so that I can keep the cell references on the probability column absolute, but the actual cell references on the overbooking costs as relative. That will allow me to copy the actual formula to the right. So to do that, I can just use my F4 key on my keyboard. By putting F4 on my keyboard and selecting the actual references that I want to make relative, it just inserts the dollar signs before the actual column and the row, and that just freezes them when I actually copy my, um, copy my formula to the right. I've inserted all of my dollar signs. That keeps the actual references to the probability column absolute. I press that enter again, I still get the same value, but now I can actually copy to the right and all of the different values are filled in for the corresponding cells. So to show you that that works, if I click on this, just to highlight what cells it's referencing to, you can see I'm still getting the same probabilities, but I'm actually multiplying it by the figures for, in this case, the overbooking strategy of six. So after calculating all of the different columns, all of the different total weighted average costs of each different overbooking scenario, what's the final answer? What do I tell the airline is the optimum overbooking strategy? Well, I scan through all of the different numbers and I want to pick the column with the lowest cost to the airline. In this case, it's this column here, the overbooking strategy of two. That is going to give me the lowest cost at 98 euro per flight. With the overbooking loss table, we're allowing to balance off and weigh up the differences between the costs on one side, which is the actual empty seat cost, versus the actual cost of bumping passengers, and coming up with that sweet spot for the airline that gives me the best option, which as stated is overbooking by two, that is on this particular flight to always sell two extra tickets and that's how we perform an overbooking loss table.